Okay, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to this week's edition of Imperial as One's Belonging series, where we explore the lived experiences of individuals from the Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. Individuals who have been willing to share their experiences of what it means to belong, what it means to go through a society and to feel that they have gained their sense of identity and belonging. And you know what? I say this every week. I think it's part of my trademark now. And I haven't been proved wrong. We've got a really special guest this week, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this week, we've got Dane um, Bacano Kelly. And Dane is a young scientist, young scientist who's a UK DRI group leader at Cardiff University. And he's investigating synaptic health and function over time to identify early stage modifiable therapeutic targets. Big, big stuff that my, my that Dane is doing. Dane, we are so happy to have you as one of our guests. Um, I'm going to start off by asking our first question. And that first question is, is, can you tell me what it was or what it is that gave you your sense of identity, sense of belonging as you were growing up? So first of all, it's a, it's a pleasure to be asked to be part of this. I've watched um, uh, some of the some of the belonging series. It's always super insightful to, to, to see and hear others that may have similar pathways, similar trajectories, different trajectories, but always um, at the heart of it, just hearing about individuals' paths and the, the, how they got to where they were is always sort of enlightening. So it's always... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just honored to be asked to be part of it so that's so thank you very much um from perspective of of belonging and, and coming to where I am which is working in academic research and science um I um I think I owe a lot to it of it to my to my family uh I was I was raised by um a very hard-working um um strong Afro-Caribbean woman who's come over during the Windrush with her family and my grandparents came over um, from um, Jamaica to um, to Cardiff, Wales, which um, there is anecdotal reasons as to why they moved from one to the other. Uh, I, I, I've never really understood the sort of synergy between Wales and, and Jamaica. I mean, it's coastal, it's got mountains, but, you know, maybe not the same, <laughs> the same climate, but they you know, what, what we are where we are and i'm a very proud um afro-caribbean welshman because i was i was born here so um um I, from where i am today in, in cardiff so um got multiple different cultures going on but but um i don't mean to digress i i i have had that instilled in me the support network from my mother from my grandparents from all of my family from my aunt Edeni, who, who who worked here at the cardiff university um to always be able to strive and and to push towards doing anything that I wanted to do. There was always there was never a, a path laid out for me or a, a shunting towards a particular career trajectory. It was always um, what do you enjoy doing, and once you know what you enjoy doing, just try and you know do your do your best at it. To be try and be the best at it, and try and do your level best to to work hard in that area and and and. And you know, enjoy it as well as you know, showing everybody your if you've got aptitude towards it. And so, I I I think that a lot of my sense of um, belonging and it, with such as it is within the scientific community, I, I owe to a very strong and stable family collective. Yeah. So, so, uh, so as you're saying that the heart of of where your sense of identity belonging and and your sense of who you are came from is from your family um and the what they instilled in you so when you were young growing up as a young black boy in cardiff in wales what was that like for you guy kind of like going through school etc did did others have the same kind of like aspirations drive um to see you succeed as your family mm. so uh, so i was i was born in cardiff and then at a very 
preschool young age I moved down to London with my mother so I, I've grown up between the two bouncing between the two places mm-hmm. um but my my schooling took place in 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 London mm-hmm. and London's quite a, a sort of multicultural environment you've got um, multiple different um, uh, individuals from multi multiple different areas continents even so yeah. you, you've got a, a a melting pot as London is is, is known to have so um, there were certainly other um, black and Asian and, and and other individuals there and were there similar aspirations I I always wanted to work in um, health I always wanted to help individuals my my grandfather had um, a rheumatoid arthritis amongst other ailments and I um, I remember um, or I've been told subsequently that I think was sort of helping him out with a joint ache once and sort of giving him a massage and he's telling me a lot of Jamaican cool anecdotes and stories as he has was his one all the time and and uh he uh I, I stopped and said I'm, I'm gonna fix you I mean with that sort of uh um the ease of a child of okay I'll just figure it out and work out what we need to do and I'm gonna fix you um so I've always wanted to work in health and to help people um I've known others um of the same um of of black origin or, or or Asian origin want to do the same uh, um, mm-hmm. friends acquaintances in in school um that have wanted to do the same thing so it wasn't that there was a complete paucity of of ambition towards that I would say that perhaps in my in my personal experience which is obviously what this is all about um that perhaps black individuals in my class and and the year above and below me of which i did sort of talk to quite often there perhaps wasn't a lot of people that wanted to do medicine and certainly none that were thinking you know in primary school uh, to do research it was just not a thing that we were it was presented to us as, as doing and at that stage wasn't even thinking about university just the next stage so um it, during secondary school and then um um, um college uh, of which i did in north london I uh, it was I think pretty much the same same story. I think maybe there were one or two individuals um, from different um, uh, ethnic groups that would want to do medicine specifically, mm-hmm. less black people that wanted to do um, medicine, and certainly again nobody that was was really thinking about academic research. It was just not something that was presented to us as being um, a pathway, as something that you can do. Not not perhaps through any sort of malice, but just it wasn't and certainly not from my family it wasn't something that they were keeping from me or hiding from me it was just it wasn't presented as as an option it was something that I found out much later on at at university so 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 do you had the aspiration to to fix granddad as it were so so you knew you wanted to to be in that kind of medical field but not necessarily as a doctor or you did want to be a doctor but you didn't realize about kind of like other research opportunities within the healthcare setting. Yeah, I think it's it's much more the latter. Um, yeah. I, I I I think medicine was the thing that was presented as well. You're talking about aspirations of trying to assist people's health, and so mm-hmm. the natural progression for that is um, if you've got an aptitude at science, well, you should be doing medicine. You should be mm-hmm. doing that's, that's that's the output, and so I think that's what I. I, I know that's what I wanted to do for a long time. And I think that that had stemmed from just the understanding that that was the go-to for helping individuals that, that were ill. It was, I, I was um, going on my my original sort of course of, of, of action. My plan was to go to university to do a degree mm-hmm. in science, really get my science grounded because at that stage, I then knew that having that idea of a, of a degree under my belt um, and then progressing into medicine and then trying to do, you know, consultancy, et cetera, that might be a lot easier with that sort of um, scientific um, um, academic strength under my belt already. So my idea was to go and do a degree in science and then to do postgraduate medicine. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do, and, and I did do um, biochemistry at the University of Leeds. Um, it, I think it was very soon after I joined, there was a couple of different things that that opened my eyes to the world of academia and academic research as being a way to directly and indirectly help individuals um, with various disorders. Yeah. Um, 
it was a combination of being um able to see friends that I'd come from through from school go into medicine and swapping stories and really the things they were learning versus the things that I were learning I was learning um differed in in what I found the most interesting and also possibly the 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 the, the different levels of stress and, and and so on and so forth that they were undergoing I realized no no the biochemistry degree is much more for me um secondly after my first year I I um, did well enough to to be um, put forward for a specific academic industrial placement for my during my degree. So I got to switch my degree from a BSc to a BSc with industry. Yeah. Uh, and my particular placement was to go to the Mayo Clinic in um, Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. which um, that particular clinic is a, is a clinic. So it's got individual patients, etc. But it's also got as well as alligators roaming around, uh, as well as um, um, a research facility, and I was I was put up in in the Birdsall and the Griffin Building uh, and um, assigned to a a group leader, um, one of the world's foremost um, neuropathologists uh, in Dennis Dixon, who I, who I still credit with instilling in me this idea of of it being some kind of way of sleuthing out exactly what was wrong with an individual and then using science to really understand how we can help those individuals what targets are there in neurodegeneration that we can help with and what medicines are there we can then generate and develop so that we can help these individuals and it was it was really an eye-opening experience i then sort of finished my year out there and came back and then the third thing that i always sort of remember as a sort of confluence of things was being in my final year, already thinking about the fact that, you know, I would want to do some kind of lab work and then um, being in lectures. And then my, I think it was my fifth of a series, uh, my fourth of a series of five lectures in a particular subject matter was being given. And the lecturer sort of got to the end and the lecturer finished early. And it, the reason was that they stated, that's all we know. That's all we know because I've been teaching you what we're researching in the lab. And right now this is the cusp of, of information i just found that super wild really interesting and just i was really in big i was probably really a geek but i was sat there on my edge i can remember myself sort of leaning forward and going wow that's amazing i've literally been taught up to the edge and limitation of knowledge in this particular area and that fascinated me and i and i just sort of really wanted to be a part of that as well so the coupling of all those things together really led me to the idea that i was going to go on to do a, a PhD and, and academic research to help individuals. So that that's, was what I went. No, that, that, that's, 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 that's a wonderful story. I, I totally tr hear you and understand that thought process and stuff. Um, it sounds like there was a couple of really pivotal points. Um, that The time that you spent at the Mayo Clinic mm. was, 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 was key to understanding about the scope the so up until that point were you still kind of like dead set on going towards medicine or were you starting to 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 waver as it were i think that there was um my stint at, at mayo clinic was definitely one of a, a, a major impact on that decision but i always think that there's multiple little things multiple yeah impacts along one's own sort of life and, and trajectory that can influence where they're going and there were multiple other little um bits and knocks that directed me on the path that revealed the path to me um mm -hmm. and that i wanted to go on and i um i think that that was a major uh, one major one but it was something that had already once i'd started university in been there for maybe about six months and sort of like i said seen others in, in do things in medicine and versus what I was learning in term, in, in biochemistry, I, I realized that what I really liked was understanding how things worked mm -hmm. and how um, we can understand how the cell works and how that cell can affect the network of cells and how that can then um, have a knock-on effect to health. And so um, I think I'd already started to see that. So maybe, I don't know, waiver is the right idea. I, 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 I don't think what I've chosen is, is something that I was like, oh, I've I've quickly made a snap decision somewhere else. I just I kind of, I think it was revealed to me this new path as if by magic. I was like, it's like some yeah. kind of extra path that was a secret, a secret pathway that wasn't available to my 
eyesight before and my vision has just been unblinded. So I was like, oh, wow, this one is the one I really want because it combines together all the things that I love. When I was a kid, I used to I used to take apart like VCRs. I used to take um, <laughs> my mum would come back in and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, superlatives that I won't say here on, on the on the channel. But the first time I did it, I managed to dismantle it and then put it back together again and fix what was wrong with it. Right. So the idea was always to fix the thing. And and um, I think after that, she was she was fine with me dismantling things because she trusted me. But um, I always like to work, understand how things work. And so it's not just an anecdote. It's definitely something that I've always wanted to understand. I hate sort of not knowing. Um, and so I think that aspect coupled with that one desire to help meant that medicine wasn't quite the area that I wanted to work in. And I soon started to realize that after I joined um, university, because I was getting challenged in terms of, we don't know this, this is how we work this out. We don't know this, this is how we work this out. Um, rather than maybe working on um, the thing that people want from medics, which is to understand the statistical likelihood of what you're sick with. I'm coming into a doctor. I don't want them to quiz me further to understand the roots of it. I just want them to tell me what I've got and yeah. give me medicine for it. That's just what we want for medics. Whereas what I want to do is understand and develop better medicines. And to do that, we have to sort of question what's breaking down and what's going wrong. And 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 I, I feel there was more scope for that in, in biochemistry and, and, and indeed in academic research. So from there, I was already trying to think about it. And then when I went on this trip and journey to, to Mayo Clinic, I realized no, this is this is it. This is what I want to do is to try and achieve my own lab and look at, in particular, neuro, neuro, neurology and neurodegeneration. It was the brain that really was interesting. So, to me. so you you may mention there something which which um, I want to just explore a little more, which was the idea that having gone to the US, mm. you you kind of like had a clear vision then that you didn't just want to do the research. You wanted to be the one running your own lab. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. so that's that, that's quite lofty goals as it were it's one thing to yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's one yeah. thing to say yeah i'm going to go and work in a lab but then to say that you're going to did you see many people around who look like you running their own lab i mean the short answer is is, is no mm -hmm. um um at that particular time there was there were no group leaders that were black mm -hmm. um um so and 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 but when I've gone there, I had people that I would consider to be mentors, Dennis Dick, uh, indeed, uh, Professor Matt Farrow, who I ended up going to work with later on in my career, actually, but who was working in a separate lab or ran a separate lab at that time. And those individuals, I don't think, ever made me feel that made me maybe aware of that i was the, like one of few black people in the in, in that particular building there, there were others but you know, one of few and certainly not in any in uh, individuals um at the highest uh upper echelons and so i i would say that there was this openness of your hero meritocracy but also prove yourself but that wasn't just aimed at me that was aimed at everybody that had joined so there were there was this element of um feeling that that wasn't the issue what i had to do was just prove that i wasn't just some young upstart from leeds university who was just coming in to just you know roam around on the beaches of florida but actually to come here and and do stuff and, and prove stuff and I, and I mean that calls back to and i'm sure this this is true for other individuals but i, I was always taught um that you if you do enjoy something and this is from family again if you do enjoy it um that's great but now work hard and now work twice as hard as the next person next to you just to get recognized on the mm -hmm. same level. And, and that was something that was taught to me from young. And I'm sure, and I have spoken to other individuals that have said the same thing to me that have had either Caribbean upbringing or, 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 or elsewhere, where it's work twice as hard because visually they're going to see you're different. And so you have to make sure that you can show them that you can do the work. And if you drop off that a little bit, it's going to hit you twice as hard. So I can work twice as hard to be recognized at the same level, but if I drop off a bit, it's going to be almost um, logarithmically sort of detrimental. So I went there with that attitude, um, whether that's nature or nurture, that attitude can't prove it, but I would, I would put a lot of it down to nurture. And um, I went there with that attitude and worked hard and, you know, 
I, I did well. I managed to 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 get sort of paper during my undergraduate, which you know was 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 good going then. Um, and um, yeah, I made a lot of connections. And indeed, I went back there during my PhD because I'd made those connections and they'd seen that I was a hard worker. And so I wrote something with my 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 then PhD supervisor to go back and expand the work I was doing during my PhD to go back over there again. So. It, it did build up my sort of rapport with individuals and they, I, I never felt seen in terms of my differences. It was prove yourself because, you know, you're six students coming in and you've got to prove yourself amongst everybody else. So, yeah, the so, mental well. well there, there's a couple of things which you mentioned there again, which was about, from my understanding, there was people who were kind of like sponsoring and mentoring you, but it was mm. also the fact about, maintaining networks and good relationships with people yeah. yeah so it wasn't just what you could get from them and what they could get from you it was that 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 mutual synergy yeah. that could help to benefit both of you yeah I, I I like to think that that was the case I mean I, I'm running a lab now and I have students coming in and out that are probably uh, that are doing their undergraduate um, 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 degrees and I'm, I'm looking for them to produce information and data but also to learn in my lab and and I get a joy seeing people come out and going you know science is cool and and also just learning from the scenario what they can do with their degree and how they can apply it um, but there's benefit to me as well that in that if they're good they'll work hard they'll generate information and we've had really great students already um but also there's a benefit to them, right? Because they can call on me now because if they've worked hard and they've proved themselves, I can be a reference for, a, you know, a PhD in the future or maybe even come here and and and, and do a PhD with us. And so um, there, there's benefits as there are in other areas of and other walks of life in staying the course, working hard and showing what you're capable of because at the end of the day, we're all people and, and, and those individuals are, using their chance to shine and I can then appreciate their their aptitude and intelligence and, and use that the same was for me when I was there I think um I, I like I said I've I've gone on to keep a lot of those connections um and I I, I assume it was because of my um uh, ability and, and aptitude at that time as such as it was and and working hard and um yeah it, it's it's a it's a major benefit to especially in academic research and science to, to keep those networks um, and going because yes. that's how we're going to get to the answers that we're looking for so fantastic so tell i'm gonna you, you briefly mentioned about your research but can you give us a little bit more of an insight into what your research is now go easy on us right not everyone <laughs> <laughs> just break <laughs> it down <laughs> for us <laughs> and stuff like that no um um yeah no that's it's a good point actually you mentioned at the beginning and, and um I just realized how sort of possibly convoluted my type my own title possibly was so <laughs> I, I work on um i work in parkinson's mm -hmm. i work in parkinson's and the idea is that um is is sort of twofold the first is that i'm trying to find ways of looking at parkinson's and breaking it up into bits mm -hmm. because um whilst we associate parkinson's with the motor symptoms that you see so sort of trunkal rigidity and that's hallmark tremor and the shaking that you can get. Uh, and we associate that with coming on at later ages. Um, it's as a result of cells, specific cells in, or, or in particular cells of dopaminergic in nature, certain types of cells in the brain dying off, but that doesn't just happen overnight. And actually they're dying off for a long period of time before, before you start to see the symptoms. Not only that, but before they start dying, we're now starting to understand that they're they're breaking down, right? They, they're, they're not doing their job um, very well. I'm, I'm sort of glancing at my computer that's on my desk and I can hear it. Um, I'm on my laptop and I can hear my computer whirring away like something's peddling inside. So I know it's on its last legs. It's not operating very well. <laughs> and that, you know, there's certain aspects of programs I'm trying to open and they crash. And so, so I know it's on its way out and eventually it won't turn on anymore. The same goes for the cells in the brain. They, they start to go a little bit wrong. They're not doing the functions that they ought to be doing. And they start to um, not do them well before they end up um, dying. So we're trying to look at that very early stage as a way of intervening at early stages 
as well as looking over time, because we know that things shift and change over time. I'm not the same person I was when I went to Mayo Clinic. It's a lot slimmer, etc. <laughs> My metabolism changed. I've had too many dumplings now. This <laughs> it's, it's taking its toll, but things shift and change over time. And so does this, so does disease, right? And so the targets that we're trying to look at might not stay the same. So we're, it's almost like hitting a moving target. The thing that we are trying to address might not be the same at the median point of the disease versus the end point of the disease. And the way to do, to work that out in my eyes is to stratify, to break it up into different bits and look at it over time. And the main thing that we're looking at from those both those aspects so to look at it over time and to to understand what's going on each bit is to look at what i think is the main thing that neurons do so cells in the brain do is talk to one another via electrical activity and they do that via synaptic connections and so we're focusing everything in and around that synaptic function because that synaptic function makes them special and allows them to do all the amazing things like walk talk think converse over Zoom, make sure Zoom doesn't break down, et cetera. Um, but also maybe underlies why those neurons are the ones that are specifically dying in neurodegeneration. So we're looking at electrophysiological, electrical activity at the synapse, and we're looking at over time in order to identify ways of making new cures and medicines. Wow. So it's a lot on neuroscience, neuroscience. pharmacology, as well or drug development or is so, that mainly the, yeah, the science yeah. aspect there's so we 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 work with um um different um um industrial companies um yeah. as well as um 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 our medicine discovery institute here at cardiff, uh, at cardiff university um to try and find ways that if we find something that's going wrong very early on and disrupted that we can maybe use um platforms to throw compounds at them to find to see whether or not they can be alleviating it we, we're at that sort of first stage and trying to identify different things and different ways in which the cells aren't working correctly right now and we found an awful lot already um and the next phases will be to try and f- work up ways of throwing specific compounds that can then alleviate and switch those those things back on so so yes it, it will be a level of pharmacology um, and and uh, as well as understanding the connections that are there the neuroscience there's a little bit of physics thrown in as well because mm-hmm kind of what electrophysiology is it's that interface between biology and electrical circuits yeah, yeah. it sounds fascinating it really i, I think it is I, I, i'm biased no, uh, yeah <laughs> no, but, um, t- i love the analogy that you gave about the wearing computer because i think everybody who's on this platform now will know that they've had a computer and you know you spend more time rebooting it than you do working <laughs> it <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> This is why I'm on the laptop. The, that can <laughs> not handle this call. I mean, not with like the video going and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think analogies are a really good way of, of describing um, and, uh, you know, differences to one mm-hmm. another, just mm-hmm. in science, but maybe even, you know, for describing to an individual the trials and tribulations that, you know, you or I might have had growing up. It's, yeah. Allergies make things a lot easier for people to conceive of things, especially if you haven't worked with or lived with those things. And so, yeah. I mean, like I said, my grandfather was a storyteller, tried to tell stories to help get the point across. And I think that that transparency in what we do and, and what I'm trying to get across is really important. I don't want people to just think I'm closed up in a room. And we try to talk to the public often and tell them yeah. exactly what we're doing. So they don't just think we're crazy head fools just doing weird science in closed rooms and and you know it's it's better we all know what exactly is going on so yeah no, that's brilliant so in terms of getting to where you've you've gone you've mentioned about the fact that you've worked in the states you've come back you've d- done a number of postdocs but making that transition mm. making that transition from being a postdoc to then becoming a lecturer and, and being your own group leader. I know that that's got its own challenges. Did you have people who championed you, people who sponsored you, who helped you and, and gave you that encouragement? And in what ways did they support you? Definitely. Um, I, I collect mentors 
like I don't know, like playing cards. It's it's mm-hmm. it's it's something I think that's important. I, I've always been a big advocate of um, the idea that you know having a mentor is good. Um, having more is probably better because there's more than one way to do anything, right? And so having multiple perspectives has always been what I see as being super beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had people who have been clear and honest about the things that I need to change or the things that I'm doing well. And that's useful just to have that frank honesty. I've also had people that tell good analogy stories and help me to get to the idea or to the solve the problem myself. And indeed, just people that I can bounce ideas off and, and, and hear back, you know, uh, knowledgeable in the area and the field. And they and those individuals have also been people, you know, that, you know, are usually further up the ch- food chain, so to speak. And so mm-hmm. they can, they have been able to sort of help and champion me. It That is important, but I, I mean, without sounding too righteous, or I, 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 is that you also have to have that, um, you also have to work hard and, and have the meritocracy also, right? Mm-hmm. So so I, I've I've fought to be here. I've I've done stuff to I suppose fought is not the right word, but I've I've worked hard to 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 get where I am as well. But I don't think you do that completely on your own, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, my my family's been super supportive. As soon as I realized this was the path I was going to do, they they're all behind it. It's like if mm-hmm. that's what you love, go and do it. Go and do it well. So multiple different places. Myself mentors and, and indeed you know family as well that's that supported me to, to to get where i am and yeah i've moved around quite a bit sometimes felt like i'm on the run um as you do <laughs> as well, you're kind of moving i've been to scotland dundee i've been to canada um where i had my my daughter as well as as, as a really good time working over in vancouver i've worked in oxford and before moving back here once i got my um future leader fellowship with the the uk arrived and, and that's been where I've now set up my own um, lab in the UK Dementia Research Institute here at Cardiff University. So that's brilliant. I, I was just I was just going to say that you, you mentioned about the fact that you've had to travel a lot. You've mm-hmm. gone to you've gone to the places where you could then find your next um, experience, as it were, or uh, to to advance your career. What's that been? Like? You've said that your family have been encouraging. <laughs> But it's you know as a as a young man, and you've mentioned about the fact that you had you've got a daughter or you've got your daughter was born there. How was that? Not knowing because I know when you're on these kind of like short term contracts, how was that for you? Because you know you're you're a young man. You want that level of stability. Was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna just go do something else and get a regular pay? You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, no, definitely. I'm, I'm sort of nodding away because all your say, everything you're saying is sort of striking true. I guess when I was a younger man and then I can just move around, right? It's the sort of where the wind takes you. And, and I did see that as a benefit of science. It, was, it wasn't it was frowned upon to sort of go, here's three years here, here's four years here, now now move around. In fact, it's sort of actively encouraged, right? And, and that mm-hmm. you can pick up different things from different places. I always see it. Yeah, it's another analogy, but I always see it like I'm a football nut. So as as loan deals, you can go somewhere else and you can learn how they do the same trade, but they do it in a slightly different way. And I always thought that that's a really good way of picking up new skills is to learn, um, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So for instance, like Dundee is really good at, at, at pharmacology, which you mentioned earlier, and going there and learning how they approach the same question, but from their side was really enlightening. And so that's that's how I, I, I've seen it. So moving around was bonus for me it was something that was um something i wanted to do because you know i wanted to go around and move around and see the world but also it was it was part of my job so it was, it was coupled together as i've moved through and had my daughter and then my son um um the onus on staying in one place became greater <laughs> so, so also it's a bit of a nomadic right it's at some point you do want to just stop and stay still and build uh, more of of what you're trying to work on in one place and so um i've been um fortunate enough to sort of work and get jobs in different places and usually actually they thinking about it they've, they've increased in length at every place that i've gone to so in terms of the postdoctoral um, role and then the senior postdoctoral role and then the career development fellowship it's always increased by a year almost every single time but um um it's it's been something that has 
being um, tougher as I do it more. Mm -hmm. Personally speaking, I, I want to be, I don't want to uproot my family and I don't want to move further and further away from my family. Um, um, and so I think it's been something that has, you know, I've been thinking of, you start to think of things like that I didn't think of when I was young, when like mortgages and kids mm -hmm. and yeah. things, wanting to then go, right, well, then that moving around aspect, that's not for me anymore. I, I, it can be for other people, but that's not for me anymore. I want to slow down and stay, stay in one place. And also for my career, I want to embed myself somewhere and, and set up there, right? And so um, this, this, this UK Rye Future Leader Fellowship that I've obtained really was the means and method for, 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 for doing that. I did have other irons in the fire in, in, in terms of having contingencies just in case that didn't work, but it was kind of getting to the to perhaps to the point where I was like, well, if this all if these three or four things don't work out, maybe I move to doing something else that is just in one place that's stable because I've got to pay a mortgage, I've got to make sure the kids get through school, and you know, you know that you know dad's not only dad, dad in my case, I can only control me is is providing right. So there was an element of do I change but this is again what I love and so I'm glad I I I, I that one of those contingencies came through and mm -hmm. and it was you know my main one so it, it was it was what I wanted to do and it worked fantastic I'm going to ask you a couple more questions and then, then yeah. if anyone else has any questions then please feel free but <clears throat> where do you want where do you see yourself where, where yeah I'm going I'm just going to leave it there where do you see yourself um, I see myself at the beginning of something, uh, of something I hope will be good. Mm -hmm. Um, I am at the earliest stages of having my own group of living that dream that I was talking to you about earlier, um, whereby I wanted to at least have the opportunity to try my hand at it, at running a lab. It may not work out. It may not be for me. I might get sort of four years and go, I'm done here. This is this is not what I want to do. But as of right now, I'm I'm loving it. We my lab's growing. We have sort of three PhDs, three postdocs, and 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 we're doing a lot of what I believe is good, useful work that's going to hopefully impact and benefit um, um, individuals' lives, right? And so for me, that's that's rewarding. And so I'm at that beginning of that stage because the lab is two and a half, two and three quarters years old. I oh, know it's three years now. So it's, yeah, three years old now. And I would still call that infancy, right? Mm -hmm. People had their labs and run their own labs for 20 years, right? And then, yeah. but I would say only the first, last five of those is where they get to a position where they're like, huh, it's running itself and it's doing what it needs to be doing. And they can present. So I, I, we're right, right at the bottom, but we're, I'm hungry for it. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to what it's then gonna come next. I would also say though that it's a uh, um, um, very sort of. It, it, I feel like for me it's really just the academic science part, but my role is to also help that paucity uh, of individuals that looked like me that were at that level when I was going through everything. So, so sort of now I'm here. I, I, I do think it's a. Uh, a uh, really important thing to be able to be seen um, and, and try and you know help individuals to see to show them what perhaps I didn't what wasn't immediately obvious to me when I was when I was going through i.e that science is a viable pathway for um, an academic and indeed a, a career in general mm -hmm. and that you know it's something that you can you can do guys it's it's not just you know to to young black men, but to, to young black women, to to, to women, to, to anybody that you know um, has faced any sort of a adversity, or indeed just weren't aware that this was something you could do, it's great. Science is fantastic, guys. Come do it. It's, this is what I want. To say. <laughs> but everybody should be getting involved in it, and and it's something that I, I I really love doing. And I'm just at the beginning phase of that of that sort of this new path that is running my own lab so yeah uh, that's I guess that's where I see myself is at the beginning of a new chapter of this academic research world yeah fantastic I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge you a bit more 
I'm assuming since you're wanting to run your group and you already said about people having groups which are like 20 years old, I'm mm. assuming that you're also looking at becoming a professor in the field. Um, I, I, I'm, so my, I suppose my, my, my question related to that is, You've already said that you collect mentors like 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 little confetti, you know. You you can you can... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so so have you got have you have you can you see have you got individuals who are helping you to get you to that trajectory? I believe so. Um, still we we talked earlier again about sort of the network that you set up. I'm just yeah. still in contact with. A lot of uh, uh, Professor Matt is always helpful to me. He, somebody I met at Mayo Clinic, but then I actually went on to work with uh, um, um, uh, and for at, at, at the University of British Columbia over in Canada. Uh, Eastern Continent has been a massive mentor. I talked to um, Professor Sudukas, who's been my sort of advisor during my my PhD days. Still talk to her, um, and, and she still provides an enormous amount of of advice and help about how I would, you know, traverse this world that I'm entering into. I've got uh, people here, such as sort of um, uh, uh, Jeannie Williams, who's been enormously supportive of young, um, early career researchers coming through and, and developing their own feelings and uh, feelings, so their own areas about the, 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 that they feel passionately about. That's the sentence I'm trying to get to. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, 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 uh, and 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 uh, other mentors here as well, Professor Anne Rosa, who's who's, who's absolutely huge in, in in Huntington's disease research. And yeah, I've got a lot, but it lists over in Germany and and a few others, right? And I I don't want to not include anybody, but I talk to a lot of of, of individuals and gather a lot, and I'm I'm super super grateful that they can give their time to me and help me on this journey. That you know, like I said, it's the new chapter, it's where I'm starting at. Uh, and if I have missed anybody out, I do apologize. It's not out of any sort of thing. But uh, uh, um, there is, I suppose, of all those mentors, um, they have faced different things and, and different adversities. And, and um, I mean, for instance, uh, um, sex and gender is one, and, and they can tell me about their own um, trials and tribulations, which does help. But I, I, I suppose I haven't, I still don't have. Um, um, I, I'm I'm happy to then sort of try and achieve that goal of becoming a professor in the field. Yes, absolutely. I would love that. I mean, will it work? Will it happen? Who knows? I will just try and keep on doing the thing that I'm doing, working hard, trying to help individuals and let's see um, where, where that goes and you know, have plans and means of expanding and doing more work to help people. So hopefully that comes through. Um, and then being that, hopefully, that mental to other people people uh, that that for me would be almost one of the major culminations is to be a mentor if i've reached a level where i can be well respected at my meritocracy level at, at my intellect level and also my my lived experience level that somebody would come up to me and be like can i have some advice about this can i can you help me through this and repeatedly come back to me as if i was their mentor i would feel like i, I you know i'd made it because i'd be able to impart some of that knowledge in a useful, meaningful way, and I, I don't want to sound worthy when I'm saying that, but I'm just saying that that's that that for me is it, that would be amazing, right? It would mean that I've done something and achieved something, and that I get the ability to sort of help three people who those three people could help three other people, and that could sort of you know network down and dri dribble down, and that's that's that to me is, that's amazing. That would be amazing to be able to do. So yeah, your story is amazing. Right, your story is absolutely amazing. You've many, done many amazing stuff. Like I said, I've watched the belonging. There's so many amazing stories. I think they're just the stories of individuals, right? And they're just uh, the the best way that what I love about the belonging is that you kind of just get to tell your truth, right? And and, and that you can find analogous synergy with that, or analogous situations to that, um, or you can just hear something new. And I I think it's 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 the best way to be able to. To move things forward as well as just to hear other people's stories so i'm that's brilliant thank you i'm going to ask you these are definitely now my final two questions <laughs> i promise, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> right and it, it's kind of like the opposite sides of the same coin what advice would you you, you just spoke about mentorship etc so what advice would you have given to your younger self right 
And yeah. then the second part to that question, what do you think your younger self would look at you now and say, wow? <laughs> um, my younger self, what would I say to my younger self? Um, I suppose if I answer the second one first, it might help me with this, the first question. So, mm -hmm. so I, I think that that if they if my younger self looked at me now, I think there would be an element of <laughs> mum was right. If you work hard, you can do stuff. <laughs> you, can, you can do it, right? You can get there. I think they might be surprised that I was doing the area that I was doing. So um, helping people and working in the medical realm um, and, you know, working on things um, that, you know, perhaps for primary school or secondary school, me would have seemed wild and fanciful. Um, and I think that, you know, having the ability to sort of run the lab and, and do that and talk to people and, and talk to individuals in the way that we can understand where we're at with Parkinson's research and then how we're going to go next would be to me like sort of quite amazing. I think um, as a result of that, if I was to give an advice to my younger self, it would be that sort of listen to that family element, listen to the mentors you have now. Um, this is listen to Miss Brown, who gave who was such an amazing English teacher down in my primary school. There's a black uh, black woman who was just so well read and she was so good. And I say, listen to them, look at them, and you can do it. Right, you can get there. It is possible. Take the opportunities that you get given or offered. I did try and take all of the opportunities that were given to me. Um, could if I think back, could I've taken more? Sure. Hindsight's a great thing. Um, but I've got to a good place where I am, I'm happy. And so I think I've taken, and that was by taking a lot of uh, of opportunities that were offered to me and, and fighting for the other opportunities and making sure that I was there and present for them. You have to make your own luck a little bit and put yourself forward a bit. Uh, and perhaps maybe that was it. Maybe put myself forward a bit more and, and say, look, here I am and I'm willing to work hard and I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm intelligent enough to do this thing. So take a chance on me, right? So uh, it's not even taking a chance. <laughs> it's not, if, you, if you bet on me it's fine no i'm joking yeah. no, um, no, no, no. I'm, I'm only but that, that's probably what i would say is it just seize the day sort of thing and, yeah. and to to not take no for a month so show them what you got yeah. show them really show them what you got Dane, it's been wonderful absolutely wonderful having you as our guest this week yeah i i i say it every week but you you've you've educated me you've you've in, given such an insight to your journey everyone's journey is different but mm. i i love i love the thing which you were going to say to your younger self mum was right mum's always right just mm. never forget that right <laughs> never forget that yeah, yeah, yeah. family all the family was right granddad <laughs> as well they were all right they were all telling me yeah, auntie netta was right they're all there telling me so <laughs> yeah so right. I was listening. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's been wonderful having you. I I want to help support you in in your journey to becoming a professor and and um, um, working on your group. There's a Donald's on the call. There's a number of 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 um, individuals who want to see young black men, young black women progress within the academic space. You know, there's not enough who have made it to the top so mm -hmm. what we need to do is elevate and work together to make sure that you get to where and you know what we we're not crabs here we're not biting at each other's heels we need to help to lift each other's up yes, donald sir. always tells me we're standing on the shoulders of di of giants right mm -hmm. i couldn't be where i am if it wasn't for the likes of donald donald couldn't be where he is if it wasn't for the likes of professor jeff palmer you know, and these people have pioneered to make our lives easier. So we must make each other's lives easier Indeed. and help them help them up. And it's yeah. not a competition. It's about us doing it for ourselves. Yeah. So Absolutely. we are here to support you. Right. That's all I'm Thank saying. I, I, I will make sure I definitely take you up on that. That's um, right. That's what we want you to do. Yeah? And we do the same for the next gen. That's, that's right. Awesome. That's right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just add, let people know what's going to happen for next week yeah. and then we'll we'll cut the recording and and have a little conversation afterwards. So yeah. let me just share next week's 
what's happened there so next week we're going to be having it's um national it's international women's day um coming up and we're going to have marcia philbin and she's a chief ex she's a chief executive officer a chief disruptor and a chief navigator sticky floor she's trampled it glass ceilings she shattered them right i can and i do step one one step at a time she's going to be our um our guest for to celebrate international women's day next week so please come and join us and um, because it's going to be another really fascinating conversation and if you have missed any of the other um, belonging series please go to our youtube channel which is tinyurl.com forward slash belonging dash iao um, where you can hear other interviews and this interview will also be hosted on there and all i can say is without people being willing to share their stories about how they gained their sense of belonging you know this would this show wouldn't exist this podcast this insight this this is my weekly therapy right and <laughs> um, it wouldn't exist but it's by understanding and walking a mile in somebody else's shoes that we get that insight and understanding that you know what there's so much more that unites us than divides us so until next week have a good week and keep on seeing how you can help yourself belong but help others belong also so thank you once again and i will see you next week